Welcome to the We Are Wake Tech Podcast with your host, Wake Tech President, Dr. Scott Rawls. Hello, I'm Scott Rawls, and welcome to a very special episode of the We Are Wake Tech Podcast. At Wake Tech, we have a vision to reach students in every part of Wake County and rally around them to go as far as their dreams, their talent, and their resilience will take them. That's a build off on the original mission of community colleges in North Carolina to take people where they are and carry them as far as they can go. But we never really carry anyone. We, we rally around our students and they gain their own empowerment and propel themselves uh, when we rally around them. But we also feel it's not sufficient for us to just wait for students to take them. We have to reach out in all parts of our community, especially those who need us the most. And that's why the organizations and the people representing the organizations that we like to refer to sometimes as our reach partners are so special to us at Wake Tech. And today we have three very special people representing three incredibly special organizations in our community joining us uh, to talk about their organizations, what they're doing, and how they're working with Wake Tech. And at the end, we'll announce a unique new partnership that we're pulling together to move forward collectively. So welcome to this episode, and let me welcome today's participants. Now, these folks are, I'd like to say, they're kind of heroes in our community. They represent organizations that are doing things that are well-known and are making a difference in our community. So it's a privilege for us at Wake Tech to, to partner with their organizations, but with these individuals as well. We have from the Boys and Girls Club, Hugh McLean, who is uh, the operations lead there for the Boys and Girls Club. Hugh is filling in quickly for uh, someone who is a hero in our community, Ralph Capps, mm -hmm. who has been the powerhouse behind the Wake County Boys and Girls Club for years. Unfortunately, Ralph's a little under the weather today, but Boys and Girls Club keeps moving no matter what, and Hugh is filling in for us for Ralph today. Hugh, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Rawls. Glad to be here. And we have one of my favorite people in the world, Latoya Montague, who is the executive director for Communities and Schools does amazing work to help special students throughout Wake County in a very unique organization. I'm a member of that board and it's one of my very favorite organizations in the world. Latoya, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks so much for asking us to be involved. And Diana Urieta, who is uh, works with NC State in the extension area of NC State, but it's a very unique program that she helped found and now is senior director of Juntos that reaches out uh, to Latino students, Latino uh, students and families throughout our community and has been a great partnership uh, with Wake Tech. And Diana, we, you're, you're a powerhouse. Thank you for joining us as well. Excited to be here and with uh, this great panel. So I'm going to go around, maybe I'll start with Diana and come back around to Hugh here in just a second. So tell us a little bit of both your personal story, but also the story of your organization. And and don't be shy because your organizations um, are doing amazing work. And as a community, we want to support you every which way we can. So tell us your personal story a little bit, but then what your organization is doing in our community today. Diana? Sure. So personal story, I'm a product of North Carolina education. I am a daughter of immigrant parents. Uh, we immigrated to North Carolina when I was at the tender age of six years old and landed in Guilford County. So um, it's been a sweet ride for us uh, being Colombian American at this point. I consider myself from two worlds and um, I think that that makes me uh, someone who can thrive in, yeah, those two worlds and two languages, which is uh, kind of a unique place to, to be in. Um, very passionate very about the work that Juntos does. Um, so as a mission, we are here to help Latino uh, students and their families gain the knowledge and skills and resources to graduate from high school and broaden their post-secondary career and academic opportunities. Um, and so as we think about all these organizations that are um, here today, you know, I keep thinking about how we bridge, right? How we're bridging um, and strengthening that bridge that uh, sometimes um, are in our communities that create gaps, right? There's gaps and bridges help us get to the other side. 
And that's exactly what Juntos does. We've been around for 16 years. We um, did start at NC State as a land grant extension program. Um, so we have an opportunity to work with our local extension offices, but really it's been the educational system that um, has wanted us year after year. Uh, we are, um, yes, homegrown here in North Carolina, but we also are in 16 states, um, all within the land grant university. And so we have a lot of work to do in regards to uh, meeting the needs of a population that continues to grow, not just in North Carolina, but nationally. And as I think about uh, Wake County over exceeds a little bit um, the K through 12 system among the population with 18.6%, I believe, Dr. Ross. So um, in North Carolina, overall, we're 18%. So we're a little above that. So just excited to, to be able to do some good work. I think, you know, there's amazing pathway programs out there uh, that continue to do good work. I think the niche with Juntos is the work that we do with the families. So we really do rally parents and young people and, and siblings and sometimes grandparents together to really talk about what are their educational goals and where do we where do they want to see themselves in the future. So before we move on, how do you kind of talk about that unique family engagement? That's a that is a special part of Juntos. So how does that work? Yeah, so it takes um, you know Juntos coordinator to connect with the families, and um, we have a middle school and high school curriculum that start that engagement. So for consecutive weeks uh, in the high school level, we are together for six weeks, middle school five weeks, and then after those um, that workshop series we continue to connect with the families every other month throughout the school year um, and then we've got uh, summer opportunities for the whole family to engage in those campuses that are whether it's the community college campus or um, an experience at nc state um, and you know we serve our young people from six from eighth grade and beyond um, so we're just very excited to be able to see um, the journey of our young people. Um, and one of the reasons that for us, I'm, I know I'm speaking ahead a little bit, but for us, it was, um, you know, intentionality and in connecting with Wake Tech because we're seeing that the majority of fa our families and young people are choosing that community college campus as their first choice. So um, it is crucial for us to, to connect with the community college system. Well, we believe the same thing, and we'll come back to that in just a minute. But first, or next, let's go to Latoya Montague with Communities and Schools of Wake County. And I'm proud to be a board member of Communities and Schools, and Latoya is an amazing leader of an amazing organization. So, Latoya, would you uh, share with us your story and the role and the story of Communities and Schools? Sure. Good morning. Um, whenever you can find an intersection between your passion and your platform, you're where you should be. And I, I really think that that is my truth with communities and schools of Wake County. Um, I'm the eldest of five. Um, I absolutely was that student that we're targeting and identifying to help find those additional accesses and resources. When I think about the work that we do, I think about providing access, access to experiences, exposures, opportunities, dream sequencing. I think sometimes students have to have a dream to chase in order to know what their purpose is. So if you think about algebra, where will we use this in life? When you think about language arts, where will we use this in life? Our success coaches meet our students where they are, which is in their middle schools and we're looking at going into more high schools as well. We also have after school learning centers that are strategically placed in public housing communities. Again, sometimes you have to take the resource to where the students are. And meeting the students and families where they are is one of the things that I think that we thrive upon. And then it's really about helping students craft what is your path? Where do you go next? And so the great thing is, is that we have had opportunities to see some students from cradle to career and beyond. And so really trying to find all of the stepping stones and all of the different paths that can help them arrive there. But we also understand that it's not only the student that we should focus on. There are families and adults who are leading the families who have incomplete dreams and incomplete paths as well. 
So how do we help them as well find what their next thing is? And so our mission is to surround students with a community of support, empowering them to stay in school and achieve in life. And one of the things that I learned really early on is that achieving life looks different for almost every person. So it could be a four-year path. It could be a two-year path. It could be straight to employment. Our goal with our team members, whether it's in schools or in communities or just kind of as someone drops by the office, how do we find the best fit for you? And we also understand that it's not a cookie cutter approach. And so really helping working, individualized, working, exposing, engaging students and the greater community, because we also understand that without a shadow of a doubt, students are 100% of our future. So that really, those thought processes and that success in their adulthood, it really starts in the early ages. So how do we start to curate that dream when they're younger and accelerate forward? And so I'm excited to be that cheerleader. Um, when I first started with Communities and Schools of Wake County, I was a student. And so as a student, I had a success coach who was there to kind of help me move around those imperfections that made me um, eligible for the caseload, which is being, um, let's just say, very opinionated, uh, very opinionated, but then how to craft that into leadership and positive leadership and how to make those connections for others. And so what we really, really want to do is find ways that we can connect students, their families, and the community so that economic development starts with the youth. And so we're really excited about our partnership and I look forward to figuring additional ways that we can connect with other great resources, such as those of you who are on the panel as well as others to make the connections for our families. And before I turn to Hugh, um, Latoya, can you operationalize it a little bit? Where, where are the communities and schools programs and how do they work to make those pathways and those success connections? Absolutely. So we have five middle schools that we currently have a success coach that's deployed during the academic day to support students that are identified on their caseload. So it could be for attendance, it could be for behavior, it could be for their coursework success, career goals, and college aspirations. It could also be parent engagement. So one of the things that I absolutely love, especially in our schools, is that sometimes there is not enough Spanish speaking families. Uh, support for Spanish-speaking families. So we're very intentional about ensuring that we either have bilingual coaches um, and or Hispanic coaches. And that's one of the things that in some of the schools, our coach may be the only person who speaks Spanish. So how do they help connect those families with the resources by being the resource? They are focused also on the whole school climate. So there are additional things that we provide for students beyond the caseload, whether it's school supplies, whether it's additional translation services, whether it's food for insecure populations, we really want to be that surround, wrap around, integrate student supports that all students need. We also have our community-based programs that are in public housing communities. We employ certified educators to support their extended learning time, where they're helping the students with their homework completion, skill building, and then we also partner with other partner agencies so that they can have a diversified experience, whether it's the arts, whether it's tennis, whether it's um, golf. We really want to make sure that students have a full immersive experience where transportation is not an issue. So we bring everything to the community where they are. No, that's great. I, and I, as I mentioned, I'm on the board of communities and schools. I've been on the board at state board and also my former college. So I'm a big communities and schools fan. And I got a chance, we had lunch together recently with the communities and schools team at Wake Tech. And I got to watch them in action because in the middle of lunch, there was a student who reached out to one of the leaders with communities and schools, Dewan, and all of a sudden, and it was over some food insecurity issues and some challenges. And I just watched the team jump into action uh, around a particular rally around a particular student and I think that's that's a special thing about these people that we're talking to today is because they've been great organizational leaders but they are in the trenches helping people one student at a time one family at a time and let's turn now to the boys and girls club and Hugh the boys and girls club is a, a name that everybody knows across the country Wake County special in terms of a boys and girls club and I know You've been a part of that, someone who 
uh, has a special story too, who couldn't be with us today because he's a little under the weather, is Ralph Caps. Um, and can you talk for, to us, tell us a little bit your story, maybe Ralph's story connected mm -hmm. with Boys and Girls Club and you know, what is the Boys and Girls Club, but why is it so unique in Wake County? Because it, it just feels like it it is the it is Boys and Girls Club, but even beyond for Wake County. What, 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 tell us that story a little bit. Yeah, sure. And good morning, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Rawls. And again, I know Ralph is disappointed. Uh, he couldn't be here. Like you mentioned, he's under the weather. So I'm, I'm sure he'd rather be here um uh then then uh being being sick but appreciate you having the boys and girls clubs here it is unique um uh just one thing that stands out about the boys and girls clubs especially here in wake county is the longevity of serving kids and families of this community um the first boys club opened down on Lane Street, just a little bit east of the governor's mansion in April of 1967. And our founding leaders made a made a choice at that time, which I think has been impactful for the almost 56 years we've been serving kids and, and families is when they opened that boys club at that point, um, uh, they opened it to all boys on the same day and i think over time has created a lot of trust in the in the communities that we serve another thing about the boys and girls club and the longevity is that the mission has held true um, over all of these years and that is to an inspire enable the young people that we work with especially those that need us most to become positive, productive, and caring citizens. And that mission has driven everything that we have done since the opening of the Boys Club on Lane Street. Um, things that make Boys and Girls Clubs unique is um, uh, that we're building centered. Um, it is actually a club, a clubhouse that the kids uh, attend um, that we're, we're focused on youth development. So in all of our clubs, there's full time boys and girls club professionals that their number one job is to form relationships with these young people and the families um, um, that we serve. And then back to that mission is um, low fees and dues so we can ensure any child can be part of the Boys and Girls Club. Um, you know, kind of my personal story, I, I came to work for the Boys and Girls Clubs a long time ago in 1986. And the membership fee in 1986 to join the then boys club now boys and girls club was seven dollars and fifty cents and it still seven dollars and fifty cents and it's funny nobody knows exactly why it's seven dollars and fifty cents but seven dollars uh, seven dollars and fifty cents a year a year wow that's a better yeah. deal than wake tech right there <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and so that that again, those kind of things have driven everything that we've done over the years. I mentioned we started as a as a boys club, um, and I started my career running the Wake Forest Boys Club. Um, and we have grown to seven clubs around Wake County now, serving a little bit over three thousand young people each year. Um, we have five clubs here in the city of Raleigh. We have one in eastern Wake County in Zebulon. And then, of course, the one I mentioned that I started running right out of college uh, in, in Wake Forest and in northern Wake County. And soon to be within six or eight weeks, uh, a unique partnership with a with a mobile home community will will open our open our eighth eighth club um mentioned that that ralph couldn't be here and and dr rawls um i know you know ralph pretty well and and you are right um he is an icon 
not only in this community, but uh, with Boys and Girls Clubs uh, uh, around the country. Um, he has spent uh, over 50 years leading this local organization, but he actually began his career in the Boys Club in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So he has been at this mission for 55 uh, uh, plus plus years. So pretty, pretty, pretty unique. Um, and he would tell you the volunteer leadership over the years has been the key. But with him at the helm, uh, some of the things I described to serve and impact more kids and, and families in this community. He has been the driver uh, of that. Thank you. And please let Ralph know we're thinking about him. If, uh, if you know, if you could have a career that had half the impact of Ralph Capps, that would be yeah. incredibly successful. So yeah. uh, we, we appreciate you and appreciate Ralph and the Boys and Girls Club. Um, and we'll come back and talk a little bit about that connection in just a minute. The um, the the reason why each of you are so important to us and and Hugh, you kind of I'm going to steal from the Boys and Girls Club mission a little bit because I think the part that you mentioned is especially those who need us most and I and I said you know the reason why we refer to these organizations and others as our reach partners at Wake Tech is really around that aspect because our vision is to reach students in every part of Wake County but especially those who need us most and to reach especially those who need us most, we got to follow those who are out there and have been doing that and been reaching out to those who need us most for years now. And so that's why our reach partners are so important um, to us and fulfilling our vision for Wake Tech. I was wondering if we could go around and maybe, you know, um, maybe start with Diana and talk a little bit about what does the Wake Tech partnership mean to you and how does how are we better together and are there any examples of how we've together started making an impact yet and where we hope to go a little bit in the future so diana talk a little bit about our connection sure so you know there's a proverbs and i'm probably going to butcher it but it's you know if we have if we don't have vision what happens we perish right people perish and I think that one thing that I've enjoyed about the partnership that we have with Wait Tech is that the leadership has vision for what is happening in our community today and then tomorrow. And uh, when I, um, you know, Dr. Rawls, I'm going to put you in the in the hot seat for a little bit. But when I first met you, uh, you knew nothing about. Well, definitely you didn't know me, and I don't. I don't know how much you knew about Juntos. Uh, but you you found out that it was in Wake County, and then because of funding, it left. And uh, after having a conversation with you, you said, we've got to do something about that, right? Um, and I think that, uh, you know, we have seen, because of the impact and being able to see, um, track the young people that are part of the program, we've been able to see that, again, our young people are choosing the community college as their first choice after um, high school graduation. And, um, you know, I think Wake Tech sees that in a way that maybe is not seen by everyone. And that has, for us in Juntos, it's about relationship. It's about, um, you know, building partnerships that really see the value of the community that we serve. And I do feel and sense, more than feel, I sense that Wake Tech is about that as well. Um, and so really for us, um, and I take this, you know, as, as a leader, I take this very seriously, you know, in folks that have vision that are in leadership and then being able to walk the journey together. And I think that Wake Tech is willing to do that from what I'm seeing uh, so far. So I don't know if that answers a question, but, you know, as I think about, <laughs> our community and the fears that they face sometimes and the uh, not knowing and having to build that trust. Um, you know, that's something that we take time to do as we build partnerships. And I'm really encouraged uh, by the engagement and partnerships that we're building with, uh, with Way Tech. We are too. And I think you really hit on the term relationships and I'm glad we have that relationship, but I think what also makes you special 
and the uh, everyone who's part of this episode today special is that notion of relationships and that's what accelerates our capability at wake tech because you you put a lot of sweat equity into the the genuine relationships that you have with families and kids and that doesn't come overnight and that doesn't come easily and you know the more we can be a part of that i think it helps us reach more as well so i appreciate your emphasis on relationships because it's not just what you do in your organization it's how you go about it i think and that's part that's a big part of why each of these organizations are so successful latoya how are wake tech and communities and schools working together um, again, I, I tell people a lot that I don't get any type of um, endorsement dollars from Wake Tech, but I feel like I want to be the biggest bulletin board ever. Um, for example, we have a young lady who was an honor roll student. I would say that would be maybe seven years ago now. Um, she dropped out as a senior. She became expecting. Um, and then she went a few years just kind of quiet. Um, she had another tragedy in her life, and she reached out to me after like maybe five years had not heard anything. And she told me, I want to finish what I started because I'm tired of people looking at me like I could have been or I should have been. And so I said, OK, let's let's make some connections. First call, wait tech. Let's get you through the GED so that you can move to the next late, late level. She got through the GED. I think I think it was maybe six months. Um, and that was during COVID. But she called me. She was like. I'm graduating and we're gonna go out to eat. And I said, enjoy, I can't enjoy. Uh, we are in the middle of a pandemic. Um, and then she enrolled in the fall. Um, she has done very, very well. And then she was recently inducted in the National Society of Leadership um, as a part of Wake Tech. She's studying entrepreneurship. And these are the types of stories that happen every day when students are left feeling as if there isn't a next step. And the thing I love about Wake Tech is that no matter where you are in your path, there is a place for you. And so whether it's going to your GED and then for a two year or two year to four year or straight to employment or, so the, the possibilities are endless. And the thing that I think that has echoed and resounded among the three agencies here is really about that relationship. Our theory of change is that programs don't change people, relationships do. And so knowing that referring our students to Wake Tech, that they will get the same level of care. And no matter how large Wake Tech seemingly grows, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't lose that small town, that small interactions, that, that agent of care in the process. And so that's what we absolutely love for our students. Personally, I have two students who are attending Wake Tech and have attended Wake Tech. So I personally believe in it, and I sell to my students what I would sell to my own children. Um, and so I absolutely, again, I was in a CVS, and there was a student who was checking me out. I didn't know her, um, and I asked her how, how her day was, and she was like, I'm tired of this job. You know, I want to do something more. And I said, what are you going to do about it? Here's my card. Um, I know the place. And so to know that you have the answer and you know something that will be financially um, sound for families and solutions, that's what Wake Tech brings to us as an opportunity. Well, thank you for that. Uh, you know, I think we all share common values. Um, just thinking this week, just pa this past week, uh, the big news in higher ed was they rank all of the, you know, the colleges and universities um, in the country. You don't have to look to see if Wake Tech's at the top of those rankings. We, we, we won't be. But part of the thing that drives those college rankings is how many people you don't serve. In other words, the biggest, one of the biggest factors is what's your admissions rate. So the more rejective you are, the higher your value. We like to look at it from a whole different perspective at Wake Tech, which is the more acceptive you are, that's what gives us value. And so the Wake Tech, we take as much pride in our inclusivity as some put into exclusivity. So while we may not make the exclusive list, uh, I'm pretty proud of the folks at Wake Tech because it's there. You know, I'm just thinking about folks like John Saparellis and others that you've worked with, Latoya, and other, you know, all the people here at Wake Tech who make that uh, 
make all this come come to fruition because they believe so deeply in uh, inclusive opportunity for everyone. Mm-hmm. Do you, let's talk a little bit about Boys and Girls Club. I have to admit though a regret and something to apologize for. But I'd heard a lot about Boys and Girls Club when I got here. I knew a lot about it. I always wanted to reach out. And in my first year, my excuse is COVID hit one year in. So I didn't make a, that out, outreach that first year. And then we all got a little turned up side mm-hmm. down. Um, but it was really Boys and Girls Club Ralph and you and the Boys and Girls Club team that reached out to Wake Tech. You you came to us and said, we don't know what it is, but we need to do something around workforce development and we think a partnership may make sense. And I still remember that day at the Beltline Education Center, which was, mm-hmm. you all catalyzed that and that's, that's what brings us together. So can you talk about what you saw at that time and how you see that? Why do why you think that's so important? Yeah, it, be, be glad to. And, um, y- you know, if if you really wanted to look at the the goal for a for a young person in the in the Boys and Girls Club, our ultimate goal would be for that young person to graduate from high school with a plan. And so naturally, Wake Tech, fits into uh, that goal, that that part of our mission so, so well, because like Latoya mentioned, whether our young person is interested in, in higher education, uh, in employability, um, learning a trade, whatever their interests might be, Wake Tech has um, an offering for them. So, um, so we're we're really excited about this kind of um, journey that we're on for the young people we serve with Wake Tech. And Dr. Rawls, I've, I've, I've heard you mention it when we've been in, in meetings together and in the other REACH partners here. Um, one of the keys to this partnership is, is Wake Tech coming to us. So many of the young people and families that we work with, um, this doesn't sound very scientific, this kind of Boys and Girls Club lingo, so many of our kids don't know what they don't know. And and that has always uh, uh, been a challenge. So many of our young people would be first generation uh, college students, community college students, um, they don't understand the system. Um, they don't understand um, or have been exposed to well-paying trade jobs and, and that if they would get certification, um, uh, you know, a lot of these positions could propel them into the middle class very, very, very quickly. And so, Again, kind of back to that goal for a young person in the Boys and Girls Club to graduate from high school with that plan. That plan, Wake Tech is walking uh, along beside us to help us develop um, that plan. You mentioned um, earlier in your comments, um, we currently, uh, you know, have um, based out of our, our, our our teen center, our workforce community outreach officer from Wake, Wake Tech that is working in our clubs. And I see the Wake Tech logo behind you and it's kind of, kind of cool, Dr. Rawls. Uh, uh, CC Hardy is, is the staff person. She has one of those that lights up. So whenever I walk into a club, I can see the Wake Tech logo and I know CC is there, which is good, but also the teens know she's there and and questions they can ask. And I'll give you give you a a couple of examples was talking to a teenager the other day and they're working. um, They're working at Amazon and, and, and made the comment of you know, now I'm out in the workforce. I, I need to get I, I need to get some um, some certification. I need to get some training to to advance. 
automatically I went and found CC, introduced them, and off they went to kind of start talking, talking through this. Um, in the Boys and Girls Clubs, uh, we work with a lot of foster kids um, and folks that know things about the, the, the foster care community, finding opportunities and pathways for these kids once they graduate from high school is extremely important because they come out of the foster care system and um, CC has already made uh, connections with some of our foster teens um, that are in our clubs. But bottom line is Wake Tech has come along beside us, just like the other organizations um, on the call and meeting all of us where we are, but more importantly, where our kids and families um, are. And so I, I, I really think this is unique and I'm really excited about where we go from, from here moving forward. Well, thank you. Thank you, Hugh, for those examples. I'm glad to know that's where the, the, the torch is because we like to say <laughs> when the torch is lit, you know, Wake Tech is yeah. there. And, yeah. you know, for us too, I, I'd note that this partnership, and you're going to see it across communities and schools and Juntos and Boys and Girls Club, it's not about an enrollment strategy for Wake Tech. Many, many of the students who we're going to touch collectively are not going to go through Wake Tech. They're going to go other higher ed pathways, and that is great. Our goals, you know, obviously we'd like as many students to come our direction as possible, but the main goal is for everyone to go further than high school. And so every student that moves forward, whether it's Wake Tech or State or Peace or St. Augs or Shaw or any of our other great universities in our region, um, that's success. And that's what that's what we're trying to accomplish. And I think you're right. We we realized that a couple of things in our engagement with you that's now broadened to what we support with our other reach partners is you really it is about you have to it is about one to one connections and it's about relationships. And that's why we think it's important. And you mentioned um, to this week we're announcing, but she's been with us a little a few weeks now, at least, or a couple of months, is Cece Harding, who is a very special person, um, is, you know, in, in meeting and talking with Cece, it feels like almost fate that she came to us because of her her personality, her mission focus, her, her um, just her background um, and experience. And something that you said, from the Boys and Girls Club when you visited with us made us think that, you know, it's not just about us providing special training programs or this special pro. There's so much of white tech that's out there, but that can be the challenge with white tech. We got to figure out how to make the right connection connect. And, you know, you just gave a couple of examples now. Um, student who's at Amazon, well, we have a unique connection with Amazon because they have their career choice program where it will actually, if you work at Amazon, will pay your tuition. So we need to make sure that all of that, and that can be something you would never know about unless there's that special connection. You mentioned foster youth. Wake Tech has always had a very special foster youth program called Fostering Bright Futures. And so I think the intent for us in making these connections through CC and the workforce outreach coordinator to work with each of you, but based there at the Boys and Girls Club is to bring all the Wake Tech personally, especially to those who need us the most. And that's why, um, you know, you all are each so important to us. Um, I want to thank you all for your organizations. I hope everybody, you know, I have to be careful because I'm always fundraising for Wake Tech, but um, these are three organizations right here that I support and you need to support because they are making a difference in our community, especially to those who need them the most. So I will advocate for you all as much as I advocate for Wake Tech because the better your job is, the easier our job is at Wake Tech. And the, and the better you do, the better we do. And I think collectively, I'm going to say one plus one equals three, but now we got one plus one plus one plus one at Wake Tech, and that equals a lot. I know that. And so as we wrap up today, I want to thank each of you um, for both for, for what your organizations do, um, because they are making such a difference in our community. 
but to thank each of you and Ralph Caps, who was not able to join us for for just being such champions. And you all are really heroes to us in the community. And we appreciate the fact that we have such a a, a deep relationship with you individually and with your organizations. So thank you for, for what you're doing and thank you for being connected to Wake Tech. And to all of you in our listening audience today, thank you for joining us in what I think is a really special episode of the We Are Wake Tech podcast. Again, we've had Diana Urieta with Juntos, Latoya Montague with Communities and Schools, and Hugh McLean with the Wake County Boys and Girls Club. Thank you to each of you for joining us today, our guest, and all of you in the listening audience. And please join us next time on the We Are Wake Tech podcast. I'm Joshua McKinney with your Wake Tech News update. Reporting outside Building L on our Southern Wake campus, host site of the upcoming Wake Tech open house. We'll have more on that story and more on the way, but we begin with news from our Scott Northern Wake campus. The Care Center opened at the Scott Northern Wake campus in August. The Care Center offers a variety of services, including student success coaches, emergency aid, wellness services, technology and transportation assistance, student money management, and the Nest Food Pantry. Wake Tech and the Boys and Girls Club serving Wake County are teaming up to help middle and high school students in underrepresented communities discover their post-secondary education and career paths. The two announced a new community outreach partnership that will provide a full-time college liaison to support outreach and career exploration activities for members of the Boys and Girls Clubs throughout the Raleigh area. Wake Tech launched a new and updated website. It's easier than ever for current and prospective students to find the information they need to make decisions about their future. The redesigned website features more video from Wake Tech's 250 credit programs to support services such as admissions, career services, and the Care Center. Other upgrades include streamlined navigation, event listings, and a social media wall, offering students and the community more opportunities to engage with the college. Well, while you're checking out our new and redesigned website, make sure you stop by and register for Wake Tech's open house. Attendees can explore our academic programs from associate degrees for university transferred to skilled trades and more. Meet with financial aid, admissions representatives, and take a campus tour. Open House is coming up on Saturday, October the 14th from 9 a.m. to noon on our Southern Wake campus. To register, visit openhouse.waketech.edu. Wake Tech celebrated its new Workforce Continuing Education Kitchens Lab with a special grand opening. The kitchens feature more than 900 square feet of baking and cooking equipment. The lab will allow Wake Tech to offer a variety of short-term non-degree courses in culinary arts, baking, and hospitality. The six to eight week courses provide high quality, low cost instruction that lead to industry certifications. We are proud to announce five Wake Tech faculty members have been recognized by their peers with the Exemplary Course Award presented by Anthology. Allison Consol, Julie Evans, Melanie Thomas, Kate Jones, and Natalie Young were recognized for developing engaging and innovative courses for their students. Congratulations. And finally, Wake Tech Career Services hosted their part-time career fair at the Scott Northern Wake campus. The goal of the event was to help students who may be seeking employment while earning their degree. Whether you're a student or an alumni, you can access resources and services to help you establish a career pathway and find employment opportunities. For more about career services, visit careers.waketech.edu. As our Southern Wake campus is preparing for its fall open house, we look forward to welcoming you on October 14th. Don't forget to register at openhouse.wagetech.edu. And for news and the latest, be sure to check us out online. Visit news.wagetech.edu. And that's your Wake Tech News Update.
I'm Davis Smith and I'm the Dean of Academic Advising here at Wake Tech. I just wanted to talk with you a little bit today about some things to consider if you are interested maybe in changing your major here at Wake Tech or just a general career change. Uh, we recognize that that can be a very intimidating process. Um, it's scary for you both personally and academically to switch from one thing to another. So I want to give you a few tips today um, to help you through that decision and talk with you about what you can do uh, once you've made that decision to switch over. So the first thing I would recommend is think about the, the resources that you have in your life um, and how those are going to translate over into a new program of study. That'll help you get started a little bit with your research um, as you're thinking about a new, a new major or a new field of study. Um, and when I say resources, I mean, what type of time resources do you have in your life? Um, it, are, is that amount of time that you have to go to school and to, to focus on a program going to match up with the, the major or the career field that you're going into? Um, what type of financial uh, burdens or resources do you have? In other words, um, do you have to work 40 hours a week and is that going to be compatible with the new program schedule that you're going into? Um, those are just some different things to think about uh, in your life uh, before making a decision about changing your major into another career field. The second thing I would recommend is to, to think about the life priorities that you have and think about will that new program of study or will that new career field match up with your priorities? So what do I mean by that? Well, if you're going into a career field that requires you to work 80 or 100 hours a week and you'd rather spend time with your family, that may not be a good match for you. Um, if that career field uh, doesn't pay the salary that, that you're interested in, in earning uh, or maybe the career is not readily available in the location where you'd like to be, then you may want to consider that uh, when you look at different jobs and different career path pathways to go into. The third thing I would recommend is to do as much research as you can uh, in order to figure out what it is that you might be interested in um, and to determine if that new major or that career field is right for you. We have plenty of resources here at Wake Tech. Uh, we have a wonderful career services area that can help you take some career assessments and sort of figure out where your interests are. Uh, we have a, a great advising and uh, student success teams, uh, coaches, who can help you determine what type of classes you would need to take and how long a new degree or certificate may take you to complete. Um, so those are some really great resources we have here at Wake Tech, uh, in addition to our website that can give you good information about different career fields that are out there, um, income information, and, and job availability. In addition to that, I recommend that you do your own research and look at what types of jobs are available in the area. Maybe talk to some acquaintances or friends who, who might be in the field that you're interested in changing to. Talk with them about what their day-to-day -day life is like. Uh, talk to them about you know, how satisfied they are with their career and, and get their advice. Um, if you're unsure and you see a job out there that you may be interested in, feel free to contact that employer and talk with their human resources department. Um, ask questions about what the requirements are for those jobs, what they're looking for. Um, ask them what type of, of income their employees make. Uh, most companies are gonna freely share that information with you if you're interested and, and you do the research and reach out to them. Um, so those three things, what are your resources, what are your priorities, uh, and do your research. Once you've made that decision to change your major, um, or maybe you're interested in coming to Wake Tech uh, for the first time and, and change your career field, uh, like I said, we have plenty of people here who can help you out. Um, for current students interested in changing their major, all you have to do is visit one of our advising centers on our campus locations or schedule a virtual appointment to meet with our advisors and they can walk you through that uh, major change process pretty easily. Um, so I hope this has been helpful. Please let us know if you have any questions. We've got more than enough resources and staff to help you answer those questions and good luck at Wake Tech. Thank you for listening to the We Are Wake Tech podcast. Join us next month for more insightful conversations about the programs and people of Wake Tech and how the college changes lives every day. 
be sure to subscribe to your favorite podcast app to have each episode delivered right to your computer or mobile device. For more, find us at podcast.waketech.edu. To learn more about Wake Tech's exceptional educational opportunities, visit waketech.edu.